Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Tom Shantry, an inmate at Yavapai County Sheriff's Office. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. To refuse charges, press 2. If you would like to thank you for using Securus, you may start the conversation now. Hello? Hey, Tom. Hey, Dabney. Hey, brother. We are praying for you, man, and um, I just want you to know that we love you, man. I want you to know that up front before we continue the conversation, just to know that. Thank We're you. praying for you. We love you, and our hearts are broken yeah. to hear of the news. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough news, but, uh, yeah, it's. Um, I appreciate all that. I am, uh, you know, it's been a little more than two weeks. I've calmed down and um, just kind of getting back to work and trying to get into a productive, godly routine here, so... That's, uh, mm. that's all I can do. So, do you um, do you have any sense of whether there will be an opportunity uh, to make an appeal sooner than later? Uh, no, not sooner. It, it never goes quickly. It'll be a couple years, in all likelihood, um, while that plays out. The um, the, 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 what happens is there are there are minimum dates. You know, you've got such and such time to file, and then supposedly the appellate court has such and such a time to to respond. But the system is backlogged, so the very first thing that'll happen is it will be put off. Um, you know, because they've got to go through things in the order that they get them. So it it will take a while. Um, the, the the reality on appeals is that every single appeal is an extreme long shot. Um, the appellate court and the Supreme Court of the state, for obvious reasons, they don't like overturning juries. They don't like ordering new trials. They don't like the expenditure, et cetera, et cetera. So they are slow to do so. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but it's it's all, you know, the best appeals in the world are more likely to fail than succeed, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, now, having said that, um, you know, we now have two trials worth of uh, misconduct by the prosecutor, very questionable decisions by the judge, and flat-out contradictory testimony from multiple witnesses. Um, the way that you do an appeal is you, you know, you, the, your, your attorney for the case makes one last motion before sentencing, and it's a motion for the judge to overturn the verdict and set a new trial based on whatever you've got, right? Um, mm. That is a formal appeal. That, not, not appeal. It's, a, it's like a formal motion. It's never okay. granted. It, if, if the judge thought any of that were true, he could have stopped it before this point. So it, it, that's not going to be granted. It never is. But you make that, and then when the judge refuses it, you're able to kind of bundle all of your different grounds for appeal into one and say, look, he should have granted this motion to overturn trial because one, two, three, four, five, you know, start going through things. Got it. Um, so my attorney has done that and his comment about it when he was done and looked at it, and remember this goes back to before he was even on the case. Yeah. He said in, in the context of no appeal is likely to succeed, he said this one is very likely to get the attention of the appellate court. In other words, they're going to look at it and say, "Really, we need to we need to dig a little bit here." Now that, that, Got it. that you know, so I, I take all of that to say this is a higher low percentage appeal than most low percentage appeals. If that, if that kind of way of yeah, yeah. chatting about it makes sense. I, I huh. think that's probably, I think that's probably where it is. But um, you know, my current status, Dabney, I'm 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 here until July 19. And normally, sentencing happens in about a month, but because of my visiting judge from out of county, everything got pushed back to two months. Um, so I'm I'm here at the very least until the 19th of July. 
remember there's a second case. We have no idea what the status of that is because before this trial, the judge just kind of threw up her hands and said, okay, we're setting a telephonic conference for late June. And so until we get to late June, we have no idea what the thinking is on that. Um, given the fact that it's almost certain that I will get the equivalent of a life sentence at this point, we really don't know what the interest is going to be from the Attorney General's office that has to prosecute that other case. We, we, we just don't know what they're going to do. So, I mean, is that what you're ex is that what you're expecting at this no. point in terms of the oh, in terms sentencing? Of the sentence? Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. They won't to do tell... it consecutive. No, we've been trying to tell people this for years. This is a life sentence, and I <laughs> we keep saying that. No, it, it's going to be a life sentence. So, I mean, whether it's you know, 48 years or 60 years or, you know, we, we just, we can't say, but it's, it's going to be a life sentence. So, um, so your, your lawyer said the, uh, um, the, when you serve them all at once, that that's an impossibility. They will not do that. It's not an impossibility, but here's the situation, Dabney, according to the law, according to the sentencing structure today, if, if these, uh, allegations had been current, it would have been impossible. Um, you know, we're going to try to make the argument that it, it should be sentenced according to the guidelines in the 1990s. The problem is, all that that will do is make it the judge's discretion. And the judge is my age and has only been a judge very briefly. His entire legal career has taken place under the current sentencing guidelines. So, you know, even if he looks at it and nods and goes, okay, yeah, the sentencing guidelines are back then, it, it's still, the, 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 the leaning even back then would have been towards um, consecutive sentencing and and knowing the judge, that's what's going to happen. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make that argument, but it, it's... It, because that argument is out there, it's not a zero chance, but, you know, put it less than 5% that he does anything else. Um, so given that fact, we really just don't know. So I, I'm here until the 19th. Normally, okay. normally Jul July 19th, you said? July 19th is sentencing. Normally, within a couple of weeks of that, I would leave here for a processing center that the Department of Corrections has, be there for about a week, and then and then be put on a, a prison yard. However, I can't leave here while the other case is unresolved. So yeah. we really don't know. I mean, you know, it's all the typical range of things that, that was out there before. They could start offering plea, plea bargains or they could go to trial, or the problems in the case could become so insurmountable that they say, eh, we're dropping this because you're already convicted. Um, I, we don't have any leaning one way or another of what they're thinking, um, and, and certainly if it's the last one, they're not going to think that way until after I've been sentenced. But... Um, you know, I, I'm going to be here in this jail probably for a while, probably at least until sometime in the fall, um, possibly for another year. Um, and then, you know, eventually, once all of that is resolved, um, I would be off to prison. Um, sometime early fall, we'll be filing our appeal, and then you're looking at six months for the appellate court to say whether they're going to take it up or not, except what they'll do is they'll extend that, uh, you know, so it's, anyhow, yeah, that's where we are. That's where we are. Um, was your attorney shocked by the outcome? No, he wasn't. Um, the outcome was incorrect, but he he made the comment before trial, juries are unpredictable. One jury will go one way and another jury will go another. He made the comment during trial. Um, once we had actually seen the state of the evidence in this trial, 
he made the comment that the jury, if the jury took the burden of proof seriously, I would be acquitted. Um, and that's why the prosecutor was doing everything possible to distract them from the evidence and to try to uh, make me look like a bad person. He said if they take a shortcut to the burden of proof and just say, well, she's convinced us that we don't like him and therefore we're going to convict him, that that's, that's, how, I would get, that's how I would get convicted. Um, anyone who's worked in the legal system understands that that's a possibility. That's why, that's why attorneys lean so hard towards saying you ought to seriously consider plea bargains. Again, I, 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 you may remember, I tried to explain that two and a half years ago. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's just juries are unpredictable. That's, this, this is exactly why. You, you do your best to select a group of people, and then you sit there and you go, well, are they going to listen to the law and say, here's the burden of proof, and focus on what they're supposed to focus on, or are they going to sit there and wallow in emotion for two weeks and, and make a verdict? You can't tell. You can't tell, and you can't tell by looking at them either. It's just, you know. So, shocked? No. Um, Does he know that it was an incorrect verdict? Yes, of course he does. Hmm. But. And you, I think, were getting our regular updates, so you have some sense of what I'm talking about there. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they only had one witness. When it, when it all comes down to it, they only had one witness. We caught him 11 times um, making misstatements either to police or under oath. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive for one day's testimony. 11 misstatements under oath or to police. Not like, you know, oh, you know, so-and-so says that you said thus and such, but you know, things that are actually recorded, written down. Um, I, I, I mean, again, it's... Yeah. You, you, what's, know gonna, uh, you know what's going to happen, Dabney? Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to be sentenced on the 19th. The sentence is going to hit the papers, and a lot of people in that jury are going to have their lives ruined. Hmm. I'm not kidding. They're going to have nightmares for the rest of their life. Because the the the... the the approach out here, you know, Arizona has done everything it can to maximize convictions, and so it is illegal to even mention to jurors what the potential sentence is for something. And they have no idea what they've done. They'll find out on July 18th what they've done. And if if it follows normal pattern, my attorney may wind up getting phone calls from some of them saying, what can we do? And the answer is nothing. You screwed up. Deal with it. You know? <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's again, that's that's the legal system in this banana republic out here. It's uh you know. Um so Yeah, that's they, uh, that's so incredibly disturbing that right. you you could have your entire life taken away based upon one person's testimony and that is yeah. Mhm. Mhm. I mean, in a situation when it's one person's word against another, you come to the conclusion that you don't know, and therefore you can't proceed on on anything. But well, again, to, you, but you're speaking logically, but you got to keep in mind that these people are being hammered by a prosecutor who is intentionally driving her own witnesses into tears. I mean, she was mean at times, trying to make witnesses cry on the stand because they didn't have any evidence to give. And she's... Wow. She, she, that's, that's how I was convicted. That's it. That's how I was You have one minute left. So, yeah. Well, um, like hey, brother, I'll maybe, keep... I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. You know, I'll keep feeding. Um, I'll keep feeding the uh, the meter. Yeah. Because okay. um, yeah, we're at 14 minutes right now, and so it makes sense. It's 15 minutes, but yeah. I'll feed the meter, and you just okay. continue to give me a okay. call when you have opportunity, well, listen, and we'll continue. To I will. Talk. You know, we wound up talking about this a lot. I want you to know I'm doing reasonably well. Talk, talk with Karen about it. I am doing reasonably well, and Good. I want to talk to you about your ordination next time I call. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about those things later. I love you, brother. We'll All right. Talk to you again Thank soon. you, Debbie. All, All right. right. See you. Bye-bye. Bye.